Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com and today we're going to be going over one of the most popular variations in the Sicilian defense and that is the Sveshnikov variation. If you're not familiar, it starts out pawn e4, pawn c5. This is the Sicilian defense, knight f3, knight c6, pawn d4, common line. After the pawn takes, knight to d4, knight f6, and then after knight c3, pawn e5, attacking this knight here on d4 so many variations where the pawn is either on e6 or d6 uh, but this one comes straight out the gate pawn to e5 attacking the knight now the most common move we're going to go over uh, a few variations is going to be knight to b5 there's a few others i will cover today because just showing one variation in this uh, is not the most exciting. Uh, you may also see knight takes on c6, or you could see knight to f5. I have played against this before. So those are the three variations that I'm going to be going over in this particular video. The first line is the knight coming here to b5, and the main threat is knight to d6 putting black in check here. If black were to play pawn h6, then you can really see this play out. Knight to d6, check, really forced to capture here. The queen comes down, captures. White has an open board state with the bishop pair, putting a lot of pressure on black side of the board with the queen. It's very hard to remove here. Not exactly what black wants to do. So to stop this, black's going to be playing pawn to d6. Always. Can't take it now because after the bishop takes, the queen is now protecting the bishop here on d6. So after the pawn comes to d6, a lot of variations that white can go down. One of those is knight to d5. This is threatening knight coming to c7, check, and forking the rook here on a8. To stop that, black has to take with his knight here on d5. After he takes, pawn captures here on d5, and the knight's going to come back to e7 with the threat now of queen to a5 check and taking either uh, the knight here on b5 or depending on white's position could always take uh, this pawn here since the queen and the knight would both be attacking uh, this pawn. So you'll see lots of variations from white here. One of those would be pawn to a4. Uh, holding down the fort, has a nice little outpost for this knight here on uh, b5. Black needs to continue with pawn to a6, just taking away these incremental squares that white wants to be at and forcing the knight to move back. Now, really needs to be coming back here to c3. This is the best square. Be on the lookout if he makes a mistake and plays knight to c3. Why? Because now queen to a5, uh, this is putting their opponent into check. If we see bishop to d2, then the queen comes, snags this pawn here on d5. If instead, maybe queen to uh, d2, that's completely fine. You can just go ahead and take that material after the bishop takes. Now the knight takes on d5, and black is now up material. The next line after pawn to d6 would be white down here to g5, pinning down the knight to the queen. From here, play pawn to a6, forcing the knight back here. A couple options that white has. One would be to bring the knight back to a3, and the other would be to take with the bishop right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one, knight to uh, a3. There's really two options that black has. He has the safer one, which is bishop to e7, stops uh, bishop coming here and having to take with the pawn. Uh, if you want to be pretty aggressive, you have the line of pawn to b5. Uh, and this says that if the bishop takes here on f6, then you have two options. You could either take with your pawn or you can take with your queen. Now, if you take with your queen because you don't want to have double pawns here on the F file, just know that things are going to get pretty crazy uh, because first you're going to see knight to d5 attacking the queen. And this is also threatening what we talked about, the knight coming down here to c7. So the queen comes back to d8. Now bishop to b5. This is pinning down the knight. Pawn to b5 capture. The knight takes here on b5. Uh, this is now setting up for the knight coming down to c7 as we've seen before. Rook here to a7, stopping that. 
but it's just going to fall queen up here to a5 to get that material back. Uh, so this is the board state that it will look like. If you're okay with that, you absolutely can go down this path. Now, I think it's easier to play if you just take with your pawn, uh, but you have to be comfortable having double pawns here. So after the pawn takes here on f6, then the knight's going to come down, attack that pawn, pawn up here to f5, uh, double pawns, go ahead and attack the center of the board here, and then see what your opponent uh, is going to do, but you are defending it with your bishop here on c8. Now white could decide to not take this knight here on f6, instead play knight to d5, attacking this knight here on f6, just continue with bishop to e7, uh, now you do not want to have the double pawn here on the F file if you don't need to. If they want to capture, that's fine. Just recapture. You're putting a lot of pressure on uh, this knight. Can't move anywhere. So in theory, you have more pieces involved into the action. So if they try something like pawn to C4, uh, trying to blow up this B5 square, uh, now you can play knight to d4. This is a really great outpost. No more pawns on the e or the c file can really attack this knight right here. Put a lot of pressure on your opponent. The next line we'll look at is the bishop coming to e3. And this is a tricky one from white. So I want to make sure everyone knows how to attack it from black standpoint. You're usually going to be playing pawn a6. You need to force the knight back. After knight comes to a3, then pawn b5, getting ready to fork the knights here on b4. But if you do this, beware of knight to d5. If you see this, the move needs to be rook to b8 because if you try something else and i'll use the extreme example with nothing going on pawn to h6 what you're not going to be playing is bishop to b6 is just huge uh for white here only safe square for the queen is to come down here to d7 but then that allows for the knight to come c7. This is check and forking the rook here on a7 with no real compensation. So this is not what you want to be doing. So instead to stop that, you can now play rook to b8. So both the queen and the rook are both attacking that square right there. If they want to give up their bishop and their knight for the rook, hey, that's going to be a win in my book. So that's what they what happens if you see b to e3 at the beginning. Another move that they could play instead of bishop to e3 is pawn to a4. Just saying, I want to support my knight here on b5. It's a very aggressive square. Same thing as before. Pawn to a6. Knight's going to come back to a3. Uh, and then from here, I recommend bishop to g4. And there's a few options of how they could continue. If they want to play pawn to f3, that's fine. Go ahead and play bishop to e6. This is a development move from black, getting the bishop in the center of the board. And it's uh, not as great of a pawn structure for white. So I feel like that is a win. If they try something else, maybe queen to uh, d3, then go ahead and just centralize your rook right here. This is a semi-open file for the rook to attack. Uh, if they want to play bishop to e2, just defending, getting ready to castle on the king side, uh, then in this case, uh, I would go ahead and take after the queen takes. Then I think just play pawn to d5, controlling the center of the board. So that's obviously the most common with the knight coming to b5, but they won't always do that. One move they will see is the knight taking here on c6. They just don't know what to do, and they just decide to take material off the board. Now you have two options is black. Uh, one that I don't like a lot, but some people prefer going down this path, is pawn takes here on c6. Because this just opens up the door for the queen to take and then the king recapture. Uh, to me, this is just not as fun. So if you are going to take, I recommend taking with the pawn. This also allows black to have more central pawns. Uh, controlling the center is always a win here. And then if they want to play bishop to c4, you can play your bishop to, to b4, getting ready to castle on the king side. This is going to be completely fine from black standpoint. Now, if they don't take here, another option could be Knight to f5. Not the strongest move, but it's an outpost, so you could just see this on board. Uh, if it does happen, uh, I would recommend playing pawn to d5. 
aggressively attacking the center of the board. They have a couple options if they want to take with their pawn right here. You could take with your bishop taking that knight. They could take the knight right here. And then go ahead and take your queen down here. Because more than likely, players don't like to bring their knight back here. But they should if they play their king here. Then you can castle on the queen side, attack with your rook here, and then you can take this pawn. This is going to be a very strong move from black here. But if they do take with their knight, then all of a sudden, one, you're going to take with your pawn. Uh, but then they have just another move that they have to move with their knight, uh, just losing some tempo in the game. So both of those are going to be good for black. Now, if we come back, if they don't take with uh, their pawn, maybe they take with their knight here and think, oh, this is a great outpost. In this case, go ahead and take the pawn here on e4, and black's going to have a very good game from here. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.